so what you are seeing right now all right allow me to zoom in okay we're going to start from so what you're seeing there is we have got what we call uh the nasal cavity okay okay so the nasal cavity is responsible for letting hair in and out okay so it's more like an air inlet so this uh nasal cavity enables air to go into the nose then after it enters the nose it's going to go down okay where it's going to uh reach an area which we call as uh, the pharyngeal uh passageway so as it goes down there we also have got what we call uh the nasal part which involves the oral part and also the epiglottis so these areas are able to allow air to go into or to direct air to go into what into the trachea instead of the what the windpipe oh sorry instead of the epiglottis oh, sorry instead of the esophagus okay yeah so uh the trachea and the uh, esophagus they are just into each other okay so there's what we call the epiglottis so the epiglottis is able to close up the trachea when you're swallow, swallowing food okay so the epiglottis has got this function of trying to prevent food to go into the what into the airways or into the what conducting zone and the respiratory zone okay so it prevents food particles from entering the what the respiratory system okay yeah so the way the body is made up you cannot do two things at the same time you have to do one thing at a time okay so to prevent you from choking so the the part of the body that is responsible for preventing you from choking is the what the glottis which closes up the what the windpipe okay all right so we're not talking about the parts of the muscle the, the palate the tongue what those are not important our main focus is to talk about the respiratory system okay let me go down a bit okay so what you are seeing here let's go down after there enters the trachea okay which has got cartilages around it it will go down okay then it's going to find it's going to branch off into two parts we have got what we call one the left and the what and we've got what you call the left and the right the right bronchi okay so these two are also able to subdivide into different parts until they reach a point whereby they form the respiratory uh zone so this respiratory zone consists of surfaces which are responsible for gaseous exchange okay and the last part of the respiratory zone is the what the alveoli or singular the alveolus which we'll talk about later in detail okay okay let's go down so now let me zoom out okay so let's talk about the surface of the lungs okay so if you look at the lungs right now you're going to find that on the right part the lung has got about three lobes huh? we have got the the one which is found on top is known as a what superior the one that's found in the middle is known as what middle lobe and the one which found at the bottom is known as a what the inferior lobe okay then on the other part which is the left lung we are going to find that there are only two lobes huh? we have got what the superior and the inferior lobe okay so the other structures such as the pleural cavity what we'll talk about them in the next slide okay so don't worry we'll cover each and every part okay so even if i don't go into detail i'm sure you can pick it up from there so this is just an eye opener or an overview to help you understand what you're supposed to look for when you go to uh read uh, your physiology textbook depending on what your lecture has prescribed for you all right let's go to the next slide so on this slide what you're seeing here is a bit of a detailed structure consisting of what uh part of the thoracic cavity okay so what you are going to see is that we are going to have what we call let's as look at we have got on the uh, right we have got what we call a collapsed lung and then on the left we have got what we call an inflated lung okay so let's focus now on the what on the collapsed lung okay so we are going to have there are about three distinct parts that we are going to look at on the what collapsed lung okay let's start from the outside okay so on the outside you're going to find that there's what we call the parieto pleura okay so this parieto pleura it's a structure that lines the thoracic cavity okay it lines the thoracic cavity in order to prevent friction 
as the lungs are doing what expanding okay so it helps to prevent friction it's a very very delicate smooth layer okay it's very smooth to prevent friction of the lungs against the walls of the thoracic cavity of the chest the inner layers of the chest cavity okay but you're also going to find that the lungs have got also another thin layer which is known as the what the vascero pleura okay so this vascero uh, the vascero uh, uh, pleura you are seeing is uh, more like a thin layer also which prevents also friction but this one is not found next to the walls of the chest cavity to prevent friction from them but they are found attached to the lungs huh? it's a very smooth plastic like layer it's not plastic but it's very small this also helps to reduce what friction okay it's known as the what vascero pleura okay then we have got what you call the pleura cavity this pleura cavity it's the one that produces what we call pleura fluid huh? so this pleura fluid is responsible for lubricating the thoracic cavity to prevent friction between the chest walls and the what the lungs as the lungs are trying to undergo what you call inspiration and expiration because they are constantly moving and remember whenever something is moving there's always friction so these things or these structures help to reduce what friction as you are doing what breathing in and out okay so those are the things that you can take out from this slide okay and uh, it's showing the anterior view as you can see then on the other side there's nothing much to talk about okay my main focus was to talk about the pleural cavity vascular pleura and the parietal pleura so we have talked about these three things which you're supposed to take away with you when you go and study okay so let's read now the bullets what they are saying so the pleural cavity and its infolding serve as a lubricating what fluid and area that allows for lung movement within the thoracic cavity the parietal pleura is a membrane that lines the chest cavity okay i've talked about this so i'll just be reading through because i've already explained okay. containing the lungs and is connected to the media sternum the thoracic wall and diaphragm okay the visceral pleura is a membrane that lines the lung surface huh? So I've talked about these structures, okay, and we have I've shown you how they look like. Huh? The visceral and parental membrane connect each other at the hilum, okay? Okay. In between the pleural membrane is the pleural cavity filled with pleural fluid. The pleural fluid, which is about five to twenty mils forms a thin layer between the pleural membranes and prevents friction between surfaces during inspiration and expiration which i've already explained then the pleural layers both produce pleural fluid from the mesolithial cells huh? okay then uh, we also talk about the pleural causes lungs to enlarge when the thoracic core expands and they yeah. also help prevent spread of infections are so the lungs and their lobes so these are the different parts of the lungs since because i'm a physiologist i'm not an anatomist i will stick to physiology so all these structures which are involving uh the anatomy i'm sure your anatomy lecturer will do a better job in trying to explain these structures okay so let me try to zoom in okay like this parts i've already discussed so we have got what we call the apex okay of the lung then you have got what we call superior lobe then you there's what we call the oblique tissue if you can see that one then there's what we call the zota uh, fissure the one that you can see there then there's what we call the middle lobe sorry that one was not uh, cropped out properly yeah so those are some of the structures of of the lungs if you can see that huh? okay then uh, like i said on the left part we only have two lobes the, the superior and inferior so lungs lungs are pyramid huh? so they have got a pyramid shape then the shaped organs that are connected to the trachea by the right and left bronchi huh? lungs are surrounded by the diaphragm the right lung usually has three lobes 
on the left lung has two lobes okay inside the lungs are tiny balloon shaped sacs called alveoli which forms the end of the respiratory tree okay alveoli are involved in gaseous exchange and provide a total surface area of about 70 meter square a pair of human lungs contains about 480 million alveoli and that's a lot okay so alveoli that connects bronchioles with the alveoli okay and we're talking about the respiratory bronchioles huh? okay there are different types of bronchioles but now we're talking about what respiratory bronchioles are the ones that connect the alveoli with the bronchioles okay an adult alveolus has an average diameter of about 200 micrometer with an increase in diameter during inhalation huh? or breathing in each alveolus is wrapped by a mesh of capillaries covering about 70 percent of its area so the alveoli ducts contains mucus glands in the mucosa lining okay mucus what's the function of mucus you're supposed to know because mucus traps dust mucus is able to move foreign particles or bacteria to the what upper part of the respiratory tree which is the conducting zone and until you uh, cough it out or you spit it out okay